This is an amazing treat. Gary and Monica have literally traveled for 48 years. They just recently finished a nine year stint in their vehicle and now have recently returned to their house. This truck is amazing. It's built like no other Overlander I've ever seen. It's a lot of detail, but I think everyone is gonna pick up something new by seeing this build. Hey everybody, today we're going on a special adventure. We're going to a place called Nevada City, which is actually located in California, but pretty close to the Nevada border. We're going to meet a couple called Gary and Monica Westcott. I found a magazine article about these guys and their adventure truck. They're on their fifth generation. They've built five trucks. They've been all over the world. And these guys are the ultimate overlanders. They have overland for 48 years. We're going to go check out their truck, check out Nevada City. Come along with us. This is going to be a great adventure. Okay, we've made it to Gary and Monica's place, and we haven't seen them yet, so we're gonna go up and try and find them. So, um, we are here. You ready for this, honey? See them in person. Yeah. Yep. Let's do it. All right. Okay, guys, we just had lunch with Monica and Gary, fed us incredible soup, and now here is the truck. They're gonna show us around. Check this out. Oh yes, the turtle, their fifth edition. Yeah, but sometimes I, I know I had the German. No, it's same. Same. <laughs> wow. You think, they, you think a country could be a little Indonesian, more creative? I know. Uh, Morocco Indonesia. and Indonesia has the same, same flag. flag. Oh. Because I, I actually when I, I put them on originally, feature. I had the German flag the wrong way. We went to the four. We, oh, there. And oh yeah, yeah. And we oh, went right. to the Overland Expo, and the German was there. He said, "You got a frog." <laughs> uh, let me get a shot of this. This is just incredible. I wonder which one is long. Well, you the same. I look at it the same. Yeah, but how long? Gary, you got amazing clearance. Look at, I mean, enough. <laughs> you know, I mean, if there's a rock, and differentials are made to hit rocks, you know, so I mean, we're not worried about the I differential, and, and, and for the most part, if there's a rock, I can either go around it or someone else has already hit it. We, we, right. drive, we drive, bad, we drive bad roads, really bad roads sometimes. There's just never been a, clearance has never been a problem. Never been a problem. We can usually get, you know. How big are the tires? 41 inch. 41 inch. Yep. 135 pounds mm -hmm. with, the, with the wheel. But you must have many so, yeah. you the, and Monica so has to be able to change this tire by herself. That's so one of the rules. Everything on the road, like she has to be able to do. If I'm injured, she has to be able to do it by herself. What's the one millionth? Uh, when, when Ford became a sponsor, um, we wanted the diesel engine, and this was the one millionth engine built at the Navistar plant in Indianapolis. <laughs> and they had a big deal. They put the truck on a, on a big... Uh, flatbed and, and hauled it to Indianapolis and had a big press thing. But um, yeah, it, was, it was a big deal. One millionth engine. It was fun. And it's been a great engine. Probably the best engine they ever made. So 7.3? Yeah. yeah. There are thousands of companies that go to SEMA every year, Specialty Equipment Manufacturing Association, where our truck is very often on display. And those companies make products just a little bit better than Ford or Dodge or Chevy or Toyota or anybody else could afford. Get the truck to be too expensive, but it's a better U joint, a better water pump, better fan belts, better air filters, um, better seats, better everything. You can. There is no product on this truck that wasn't that was really important that wasn't supplied to us by a sponsor. Wow. And we have a good rapport with them because we do. They they pay for the exposure. And we give them the exposure whenever, they, whenever they, yeah, their name appears in any of the stories or anything. Uh, you know, we, 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 we took, pride ourselves in giving back more than we get. And we use exactly the same battery in the truck for the starting batteries and the four batteries in the camper. 
And so they are, they are basically, in our, for our most purpose, their deep cycle. But if I'm in the middle of uh, Tajikistan and one of those batteries dies, I can take one of those batteries out and drop it in. And it's, if you have, you know, these motorhomes now, I don't know what you have in your camper, but it's the lifeline battery. If not, you need to go to camping room, forklift to get the thing out or find one someplace. Yeah, yeah so um, you can find a battery like this. It won't be, ex oh, it won't be a, an Odyssey and it won't be exactly the same size, but it'll be a 12 volt battery that'll start the engine. You can find it in any parts house in the world. So it's a battery, you know, it's like, you don't have to have exactly the same size. You can make it work. So that's, that's one of those things we try and do with this truck is to find things that we can use uh, in an emergency in a foreign country. Uh, we can actually, and the batteries are going dead, I can start the engine up and run the truck for half an hour and get another day surface charge on the four batteries in the camper and heat the camper at the same time because the coolant from the engine is going back to one of the three heaters we have in the camper. How are you um, heating the back, the cabin? We have the, 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 the camper itself. Mm -hmm. We have three heaters. One is from the engine, coolant. Coolant goes from the engine back through a radiator called a, a um, Hunter. And it's a, just a little radiator, and, it, and it's got a thermostat, not thermostat, but it's got a rear sat on it. You can adjust the fan. And so if the engine's running, so for example, we're driving down the road and it's, you know, it's freezing outside, I can open that valve up, turn the heater on, and when we stop, the camper's warm. So that's one heater. Then we have a second here, which is a German Airtronic, made by Ebensbacher, and that runs off diesel, off the reserve tank, and uses very little fuel, very little electricity, and it'll heat the camper up from around, oh, 50 up to a real comfortable 67 in 15 minutes. And I can push it on, I can turn it on from my bed. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's warm when you yeah, get up. Yeah, it's just a, basically a hot air here that, that, that burns diesel. That's one heater. That's the second heater. Then we have a third heater, which is called a uh, D5 hydronic, and that's made by Ebensbacher too. And I can show that to you. It's a coolant heater. So it takes the coolant from the engine and heats it to 160 degrees. Okay, and it has its own little pump. Takes the engine, takes the diesel from the rear tank, pumps that 160 degree coolant wherever you want to heat. I can change a valve and preheat the engine in the morning because it's a diesel engine, doesn't like to start when it's real cold. It'll start down to minus 60, but below that, it just, it's better if you preheat it. And, and, and I can take that same coolant and run it through the, de, through the uh, hunter by changing a valve so that the, heel, the, the, hunter, the D5 hydronic is pumping this 160 degree coolant into the engine to preheat it. And it's also pumping that coolant through that little heater and that same 160 degree coolant by changing a valve, it's also pumping it through another German device called a flat plate. A flat plate is about the size of two packs of pounds of butter and it's a heater heat exchanger. So that coolant goes through, same coolant that's in the engine, goes through that flat plate and when you turn cold, when you turn your hot water on in the sink, that cold water from our tank is pumped through that flat plate and comes out the faucet thermostatic control so that it only comes out at 120 so you don't scald yourself. Right. So as long as as long as that as long as there's diesel in the tank and water in the tank in the tank, uh, the D5 hydronic is going to heat that coolant, pump it through that flat plate, turn the pump on for water, hot shower. You know, these are little things you discover, you know, we we the, I I can't take great that we've we come across these things. The, the, the flat plate was something that Sportsmobile was using in Fresno for a long time. And I said, wow, what a great idea, yeah. And then we started using uh, Zeiss windows, and then they started using them. A dual pane. So they don't, they don't transfer heat, and they uh, have mosquito screens, and when we get inside the camper, you can see those have a privacy screen. So you built the box. We designed the box and took went into went to a company in Canada, and they basically built the box out of Nitacore. Nitacore is a honeycomb material. I can show you a piece of it, with a layer of fiberglass on one side, and on the other side, and it becomes stiff, as stiff as comparable piece of plywood. Oh, and yeah, it, that is strong. And it's very good for for heat insulation. The only problem is that if you're if it's a really warm day, 
Um, it also keeps the camper warm for a long time at night. So if we're parked in Turkmenistan when the outside temperature is 135, it's hot, no matter what you do. And we don't have air conditioning. We have fans, and, but um, and temperatures like that, we just go in the front and turn the engine on and sit, sleep in the seats and turn the air conditioner on. <laughs> you, don't, you don't get a good snack. 135, you can wet towels on you and spray yourself with alcohol and put towels in your face and turn the fans on. 135 doesn't get cold. <laughs> and it never gets cold. How you doing? It's yours. Thank you. <laughs> now show, on the back you can see a little bit of the history of the Land Rover back in that Land Rover days. The Turtle 1, the Turtle 2, uh, Turtle 3, South America. That's Chimborazo, the highest point in the world to the sun because it's on the equator. Ah. And this is uh, crossing parts of Siberia with our support trader. Out kind of Yakutsk or Irkutsk, and uh, this handsome couple. Well, still, hey. <laughs> milk crate, multi-purpose. Use it for a step, sit on it, stand on it, turn it upside down, put fish in it in the tide pool, keep them clean, turn it back over again, clean the fish on it, lock it up when you stop at night because we don't want anybody to steal it. We've lost a couple of them, not anymore. Short, short cable in the lock. Click. Metal. Metal, yes. So easy to get in, possible to get in without the step, but certainly more convenient. And even with this, even more. And by the way, when you wipe your feet off on most of the steps you buy in, at Camping World, they're great. You can stand on them, but you got mud and snow on your foot, you're just smoozing around. Yeah. On this one, guess where the dirt goes? On Straight the ground. <laughs> oh, okay. Come on in. Watch your head. We stayed with fluorescent lights just because I like them. I don't like LEDs. Some, some, someday we may go to changing things, but right now they're just too bright. and I don't want to change the fixtures and everything. So, work table. Seat three people for, for dinner. A fourth can sit here on a, on a, on a separate, separate chair we have outside. Um, it's tilted, so it's comfortable to sit. Underneath here are all the, the inverters. The inverter. 2,000 watt, 100, 125 amp, 125 inverter to charge batteries. More parts and tools and things. And for example, if I want to know where my spare seal for my pressure cooker is, I can type it into the computer, open up Word program, and type in uh, pressure cooker. And it'll come up on, oh, box under the seat. Everything in that box is also in the computer, so if I want to find something specific, it's usually in that box. Some things most campers don't have. What do you do with dirty clothes? Dirty clothes hamper. Oh, that is a neat, good use of space. On the other side also, back here, same storage compartment. Old socks, wine bottles. You wrap the wine bottles in the sock? Every bottle fits a sock. Wine storage. And tools that I can get to most of the time without digging in a bottomless pit. A compressor refrigerator, which doesn't need to be level. Runs off 12 volts or 110. It has a freezer compartment. And it has a, a safety latch here. We're venting right now. Pretty good size refrigerator. A reasonable size freezer, enough enough for two or three days of fish. More storage. Everything's got to fit exactly. Okay. And flashlights everywhere. Rechargeable now. Everything's rechargeable. Really bright flashlights. It is. What kind is that? That's um, Coast. C O A S T. C O A S T. Yeah, Coast. Okay. All the controls for everything is over here. Um, this is the the um, go light on the front on top of the box. This is the heater controls. This just reminds me that I have the valve set correctly. 12 volt outlet over here. Music control over here. Light here. This is just a computer that that can be programmed if I want to set the heater to pro to pre warm the engine uh, tomorrow at 3:30. Oh really? You can do it that way, but I don't use it. Uh, this is where my iPod goes, so we can play music here. And this is more storage here. 
right now it's full of as a, a, extra fans that we can plug in around to the different fan sockets over here one over there and uh, above your head is one of the two main fans we have this takes lots of air in and out two burn three burner stove with a super burner in the front everything is full extension drawers so you can get the stuff marine latches the water filters I'm talking about are down here you can see them in the back or I can show them to you in the, in the house too those are the water filters right there there's a, that's the that's the primary filter that takes out the chlorine and the one there in the back takes out chunks and dirt and scuzz and other things like that um, the bed is folded up has the sheets on it already these are th th three different levels of blankets depending on the weather the bed comes out all the way out like this it sets on this drawer right here I think it has a 350 pound load hinge so the, the bed comes out like that this flips over pillows go over here they're not in their case right now because we're using them in the house and those are our down coats also extra pillows you want to read in bed and then even with the even with the bed made up at night you can still get out a sink at night if we need to do um brush our teeth to get, get water filtered water hot and cold water stationary again things accessible things pins felt pins batteries face clips stuff like that you know then you don't have to dig for them closed storage again full extension so you can get this stuff in the back and summer clothes and it slowly rotates into winter clothes when we need to change seasons over here computers cameras made to take made to, made to fit things every fit every, everything has a space designed around it my big pelican case goes here with the camera equipment and behind there's room for my drone in a box made for the drone down here file cabinet oh, books nice gotta have it on the road you know paper paper works maps instructions stuff you can't put in the computer or don't want to over here tripods And here more storage shoes magazines whatever this is a step to get up on the bed at night it goes like this closes this little spring adapter keeps it from accidentally opening so you don't fall on your face and you step from there to there which your bed is here yeah the bed is already here so you're stepping from there to there and you get Amazing. a bathroom bathroom where do you put a bathroom in a small camper they have those campers they sell now with the we call them shed shower slave cook shed shower shave cook breakfast all at the same time please don't get the toilet paper wet campers okay right shower this is the shower right here and there's plenty of room to walk around the shower and the curtains come around here and here and here and here so you've got room you know you're not bumping into the wall or anything you can open the door if you want to because it's waterproof got a mirror for shaving shower controls go here they're all in this apartment here hot and cold water 40 gallons worth if you want to take a long one usually a good shower is three gallons underneath here more storage four deep cycle batteries and the the hunter the hunter heater and the water tanks right here oh toilet you gotta go to the bathroom in a big city you're out in the country dig a hole yeah take the portable toilet seat it's really comfortable ah oh, but in a big city and there's no bathrooms and there are cases i really like the idea gary of the uh, world map it draws attention one of the our, our three may you could you you could cover mexico and Guatemala with road with roads, but you couldn't see the country anymore. So our our first major trip was shipping from California, or actually from Tacoma, Washington, 
to Magadan on the, on the Pacific side of Russia and then driving across all of Russia, which they basically, for good reasons, said it couldn't be done because there were no roads. We actually drove up the Lena River for 700 miles on the ice, but we drove across all of Russia and around Europe a couple times, see things, different things, and then back up to Nordkap, the most northern place in the world you can drive. From basically from from Norway, we shipped back to uh, to Iceland, and then from Iceland back to Newfoundland, and then from Newfoundland back to California. That was trip number one. Trip number two, we shipped the other direction. We shipped from here to um, Belgium, and then drove around through Europe, all the all the different countries. We were following the Silk Road, number one, number two, driving again ocean to ocean wheels on the ground. So we started here, we started in the, in the Atlantic, drove around this area and around through, through all the, through most of the European countries that we really wanted to see, following the Silk Road, which basically if you go Mark, Marco Polo's route, we'd start in Italy, but the Silk Road was a web of trading routes that came from China and there was no single route, but there are, there was a major route and we followed that major route all the way across down through Turkey and then into the Stans and, um, and across the, um, all the stands and and then into um, um, Georgia and then more stands and then finally into Tajikistan and then Tajikistan back up through China up into Kyrgyzstan back into China again and all the way across China ocean to ocean and then to get home we drove back up through Mongolia and back up to Siberia and across Siberia again and shipped down to ship from from um, Vladivostok to um, South Korea, and from South Korea we shipped home. How long was That's that trip? That was uh, four years. Four years, 50, <laughs> four years, 40,000 miles, 26 countries. Oh man, that is incredible. Then it, was, it was an amazing trip and, uh, and we're still, you know, we're, we are still living parts of it with, uh, with the girl we're sponsoring because she is from that little country right there, Tajikistan. And now you're thinking, it looks like you've been to South America quite once, extensively. Yeah, once, yeah, twice actually, but that's, that's the, uh, that's, that was the big trip. The, the first trip we were actually journalists filming for a rally, uh, pre-run. Pre and so we, we, we came down and saw some of Brazil and some of Chile and some of, uh, um, but we didn't see much of it. This, but the main trip we, we shipped from, um, from uh, New Orleans down to um, Cartagena, I think, and then drove basically followed the coast route. This next trip, we're gonna go into Argentina and Chile and maybe a little bit of Brazil and, and then some other places we didn't see in this part here of the world. When, when's the next trip? Whenever the borders open up and the pandemic settles down enough, you know, and we don't know what's happening now, you know, we just, we're just getting ready to think about doing it because um, Uruguay was open, the borders were open, and Argentina was starting to open up. And now Brazil is, Big Red, the, the, the new variant. So it's going to go, you know, so it's just a matter of whether or not we're going we to trust our shots and our, and our vaccinations, safety things, people do wearing masks and six foot. But so that's what, it's, that's what we're looking at now. And we don't know, we could, and we could also drive to Africa because we haven't done that yet. When we crossed Liberia, we had temperatures down to minus 83, I think. Um, starting at the front here, buck stop bump custom built for us. With lock it, with locking compartments for stuff like chains and oil filters and stuff that you don't worry about too much. Buck stop. They make amazing bumpers and they, they do for almost any vehicle. And this was basically parts of their of their standard bumper. But we wanted brush guards up here where we could still get to the headlights. And we wanted places for the lights for specifically for the for the fog lights that sh not really for fog mostly but for shining on the side of the road when we're driving in these really narrow roads. And then our main driving lights. Yeah, and then a six, and a 16.5, that's the Hella's latest, yeah. And uh, uh, then we have, and we have a camera in front and one inside, one, and one inside the camper and one in the back. So we can see what we're backing into before we hit it. And we can see if a door comes open in the camper. <laughs> and this is lockable too. The 16.5 Warren winch with um, synthetic winch. No, it's steel. Steel? Yeah. It's designed to keep cows out of the radiator. And um, it also has a power steering cooler down here, which came 
from the factory, we just put a guard on it. Our power steering was done by Lee Power Steering. I, we were down there getting some repairs done, so we had stickers on there. Have this front end cut out? Bushwhacker flares. When we when we decided finally which tire we were going to use, because we had to go to something that would carry um, our estimated fully loaded weight down the road, about fourteen thousand pounds, which is seven thousand pounds per axle, and we had to have a tire that would carry that kind of weight uh, in a single tire. Because the dual tires won't work, they, they, they plow snow, they get stuck in sand, they pick up big rocks in between them. So dual tires are out completely. So we had to find a tire. We looked around, looked several different brands, and Pirelli and Continental, and, and the Michelin just keep coming up. The Michelin XCL is an amazing tire. This tire is 55 pounds in it right now, and I can run it on the highway at 80 miles an hour. If I did that with any other tire that's even close to being this capable, I'd have to put 110 pounds in it to keep it from overheating. This runs at 55, and as soon as we get into off pavement on dirt at all, I'll drop them down to 30 or 25 even. This is a military tire. They use them on the Hummers. They use them on all the, all the military vehicles, uh, transport vehicles in, uh, in, in countries that can get Michelin tires. Uh, it's, just, it's just an amazing tire. We, we drove around the world with five of these and never had a, even a slow leak. Extra horns, and is that a cell phone boost? Those are... Um, that, 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 that's just our CB antenna, which we required when we were antenna. taking uh, tours in Baja and Chihuahua. Everyone had to have a radio so we could co co communicate with each other. Those are um, um, FIAM air horns, international language. You can talk to anyone in that language very quickly. You can say, please get out of the way, I'm coming, or what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> very loudly. <laughs> And they're and they are powered by our by our by our air air, air compressor, which is uh, back in one, in one of those boxes. If you want to see that part, yeah, we can go to the cab later, I guess. I can feel like I can go from from 35 to 60 in about maybe two minutes because we have dual Extreme Air air compressors by Extreme Outback, and they 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 power the air horns, they power the ARB lockers in the front differential, they power the Helwig airbags in the rear suspension. They also give us air to blow anything off we want to blow off, and they'll fill the tires up. And because we have a FIAM five-gallon aluminum reserve tank, I can also seat a bead on these tires if I have to, without pouring gasoline in them and throwing a match at them. <laughs> right, those are air compressors right there. And they feed a tank that's behind them, under the frame. It's on the, it's on the specs if you go to our website. There's a, Five, there's a nine part series on our website detailing what I'm going to tell you now. And it'll tell you what, what tank it is and, and how much air it holds. But it's enough air to reseat a tire. Wow. And while you're, while you're going from that tire with a hose, which is in this box here, everything for checking tires is there. Yep. Including extra oil for the for the uh, pump and um, gauges and blow off hoses and everything all else. While you're going with that hose, which reach, will reach someone else's vehicle or all four tires on ours, while you're going from one tire to the next, it takes maybe 30 or 40 seconds. Uh, the air compressor is filling that tank again. So the first time you hook up the hose to the second tire, you've got that all that air in that tank. It goes and blows it up, you know, right away. You're already 10 pounds ahead. Out, out, outside water that kids can't play with. Wash your hands. Wash the windshield. Secondary fuel filter, which also can be hooked up to 12 volt to preheat the fuel. Although the engine filter also preheats the fuel from the factory. That's the D5 hydronic right there. Heats water to 160 degrees from the engine and pumps it whatever you want to heat. In this case, I've got five valves and depending on where I have those set, for example, I have a little cheat sheet here. D5 to flat plate. Okay, that is hot water only. Everything else is closed. If I set that, if I open up and three open, it heats the flat plate, and we have hot water in the back, in the shower or the kitchen um, for 40 gallons of it for as long as you want to use it. And this is my jumper cable here. If I want to jump the battery or anybody else, I've got a cable that this is like a 12 volt battery plug from Warren. It just you plug in the jumper cables and jump yourself or anybody else filters. These are these are transfer tanks. So when the hot water gets 
goes into these. It allows me to take the hot water inside these and send them to where I want to send it. Ah, right. Otherwise, you'd have masses of hoses in here. Yep. So that's just it's a, kind of a like shortcut. It's a header or a manifold. Yeah, manifold, yeah, yeah. This is our 110 connector for the batteries when we're plugged in someplace, which we will be when we pull back into the camper. Uh, this is where we fill our water from, 40 tank, 40, 40 gallons. And um, if it's if we have to get it because of our water filtration system, which we haven't talked about, we can fill our water tank, which is down here low, underneath the dinette. We can fill it from anywhere, uh, river, irrigation ditch, lake, stream, hose in the gas station. We don't care because we filter all the water and the filters take out all the big stuff like amoebas and giardia and pieces of straw and whatever else, and dirt and, and stuff like that. And then we also put in a measured amount of chlorine into that tank so that it's basically like all cities use chlorine to kill viruses and that's our biggest enemy in foreign countries. So the filters also take out the, vi the chlorine which, which has already killed the viruses. So we have pure spring filter, same water you drank, same filter you drank from in the house by the way and the one we have in the garage. And we, so we're so used to drinking unchlorinated water that when we take a glass of water out of even here in Nevada City, which has pretty good water, you can still taste the chlorine sometimes in the spring when, when the, when the, when the runoffs are, you know. So we go, eh, what's that? <laughs> so we use that for coffee and cooking. And, and we, I mean, you, can still, you can still drink it. It's perfectly fine. It just tastes a little bit like Los Angeles tap water. A little, little thing I got from the, one of the guys down there. When diesel runs out, it makes a mess. Keep it on the ground. Well, that's neat. Simple and effective. Yeah, crazy little idea. The guy that made our rack for our sand ladders. Second, second fuel tanks back here. Yeah, basically 80 gallons, which gives us about a thousand mile range. And if there's a road anywhere in the world a thousand miles long, there'll be diesel somewhere, or it wouldn't be a road. Mm -hmm. Period. Because everything uses diesel: trains, airplanes, transport trucks, generators, diesel. And diesel is basically diesel. It doesn't really care until you get into really cold temperatures. Then it has to be winter diesel, which you find out about that before you turn your diesel into, into tapioca pudding because it has all these additives in it. So our engine has a standard iron special fuel pump that um, can take that kind of unlubricated diesel, which is what they put in all the trucks up in the Prudhoe Bay and military trucks up in Alaska, so they can run diesel fuel. They, so they can run avgas, aviation fuel, which is high-grade kerosene or diesel. These compartments go all the way across for like fishing poles and stuff like that, or skis if we want. You can put this on any faucet that has water coming out of it. Tighten it up, hook your hose to it, and you have water. It's called a cheater hose. I've gone into bathrooms in South Korea and hooked it onto the faucet in the kitchen, in the sink, in the bathroom, and ran a hose out and filled my tank with it. Beautiful. Or a lot, a lot of, a lot of uh, rest stops have water, but they don't have water with threads. No. Carry your own threads. Two propane tanks. People don't realize, and I didn't realize for years, this is propane, otherwise known as liquid LP, liquid petroleum. It's a liquid. If I want to fill this tank in France, I can go to a hardware store that sells refillable tanks, rent one temporarily, take it out in the parking lot, turn it upside down, and with the right connector from here into their tank, which you can usually get at the hardware store because they all have exchange tanks and they have their own custom connectors, we carry a, 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 carry a selection of them because sometimes the French will work in Mongolia or vice versa. Um, and you just turn their tank upside down, open the valves. I'm making it more simple than it. It, it, it just can't be any more simple. It's liquid. Open your valve, open their valve, dump it in. So extra fuel cans, diesel, again, just as an addition, but also very important if you come to a place where you can't find diesel close to your truck, but the guy's got a 55 gallon barrel in the back of his house, you need to get the diesel from that into your truck. So this is for transporting diesel, not only just carrying spare, but for transporting it from someplace where you can't get the hose to your truck for some reason. And it's nice to have a little spare sometimes when you know you're going to be into a country where it's, it's um, five dollars a gallon in some place, and the next country is only a dollar fifty a gallon. So fill everything up. <laughs> spare tire, 135 pounds. 
That little thing up there above the camera is another draw tube. And that has a bar coming out with a cable that comes down and hooks into one of these holes. And a little drill winch comes over and hooks onto this right here. Unloosen the tire, take the pressure off, pull it out, pull, push the button on the drill, lower the tire down to the ground. Extra water, pretty important because we can run out of water. And uh, again, transporting it from someplace where there's water. If we can't get a hose, or with our treater hose, can't get a hose to the truck, you can go and fill one of these up someplace and bring it back and dump it in. Serious traction boards. Yeah, those are from, uh, from Germany, and uh, they're standard equipment for anybody that's going out into the desert in Europe. It's called sand ladders, but they also work in mud and snow. And you basically put them in front of the tire and drive upon them, and you have a much bigger platform. Um, they also make a great place to stand if you're going to take a shower. Which Rear hitch with a um, drill vise, max drill vise, comes in really handy. We've used it more than once when you need to really hold something. Oh, it is. Fits into the trader socket. That's a vise. It's a custom bumper in the back built by a company in the Oceanside. And um, it has, um, among other things, um, it's hollow. It's attached directly to the frame. So I can jack on it. I don't know how you get a high lift jack under it. I'll show you. Uh, but also the high lift jack, where do you see that? Most people carry them on the front of their vehicle. They're cool looking, you know. I'm a four-wheeler. Uh, <laughs> high lift jack. That's the part of the jack that lifts the truck up. Everyday camping compartment. Instead of having the doors open this way, which you would normally have them, this one opens this way because you don't want to walk into it when you're camping out here. So everything that we use generally for camping, chairs, Footstools, table, barbecue, quick, quick connect, quick disconnect for the barbecue right here from that tank over there. Okay. Um, well, this is a this is a wire feed welder that runs off a 24 volt, two batteries hooked up. So if I have to do some welding, and I have once, I, I can weld some myself with a wire feed. I use a stick welder before. It's much safer for me because I'm not a welder. And also there's a um, portable toilet seat, which turns out to be still one of my favorite places to go to the bathroom. But, you know, behind a bush, we dig a hole, um, go to the beach, high tide mark, put a couple shells under the feet so they don't sink in, look both ways, make sure there's no fishermen coming. <laughs> You're done. You're done. <laughs> so, so everything we need for an instant camp is right here. Just about a mirror if I want to shave outside. Let's see if my hair is combed, yeah. <laughs> Big plates go on these bars with double locks on each side. So when we're shipping the truck, everything is locked up completely. These compartments, we just empty them into the truck, right. into the camper. The, camp, the, the truck then is a safe. These windows are too really small to crawl through. There's one on the other side, and there's the one from the crawl through from the cab. And we put big aluminum bars that are that thick, painted black, Velcro to the inside of the camper. So if someone looks at the window, it looks like it has two great big bars across the window. You walk away. <laughs> and uh, down here, another contraption that nobody ever thought about. This is a step which goes in here in combination with combination with one of our most useful uh, tools which I'll show you later is my milk basket but then you can go from here to here to here to here to here to put it on top to get into that box up there or anything else you have to do up on top of the camper but this this hole has more than one function the other side of this aside from the box is and this guy here is a trailer hitch size and it goes right in here like this and one of those tables up there fits and bolts with two wing nuts to that hole so I have a table here which is what I set my barbecue on when I'm barbecuing with the extension hole coming out okay awesome. that's uh, neat that's and like and <laughs> for the high lift jack which will lift the back of this truck up or the front how do you get the high lift jack oh High lift jack nose gets here. You gain that much lift space already from the high lift jack. It's, jack, it's jacking directly on the frame and it's not going to tip in and destroy the side of your truck while you're at it. 
Yeah. Yeah. And of course, remember those holes in the front? Ah. Same thing. High lift jack, extender. Oh, uh, oil. You can't get oil in some third world countries, a lot of countries. So you got to carry your own oil. And I, I was in uh, Kyrgyzstan and I did an oil change, big cardboard box and a black plastic bag. And I was trying to find some place that would take it and recycle it for me. Nobody knew what I was even talking about. I didn't speak Kyrgyz. They didn't speak English or Russian or any of the other languages Monica speaks. Finally, we found a little shop on a back street. And I said, you know, I chose short in the box, you know, and he said, oh, okay, um, $5. I said, you're going to charge me $5 to recycle my oil? I, I don't want to pour it on the street and the ground, you know? No, 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 no. I pay you $5. <laughs> I gave it to him. <laughs> and, oh, and, and an Anzo had it that. <laughs> <laughs> oil, 14 gallons of it. Spout. A, valve, a, a oh, handle that's oh. not on it. Put your little Nalgene one-quart bottle underneath there, like filling it up for beer. And the oil is back in here now, so I can change my oil twice or add oil to the truck whenever I need it without carrying buckets of oil. Yeah. Um, Helwig bags that give us uh, a little softer ride in the rear. Custom, custom Deaver Springs designed to carry 14,000 pounds all the time, no overload spring. Um, the, the truck comes with normally with two leaves and a big overload spring. This, I believe, has nine springs. But it's a it's a it's a design kit that shows it will carry the load all the time and still not jaw your teeth out. And shock absorbers, big rancho in the back set on number three, and in the front, twin ranchos set on number two, which keeps them from overheating on a washboard road, but gives us plenty of shock absorbers. And the same kind of springs, nine leaves probably, I think I last time I counted them, and that's designed to carry. 7,000 pounds axle all the time. It's never unloaded, it's never overloaded. That's what, that's what the truck weighs. You know, so why have a truck that's pickup truck that's designed to carry nothing some of the time and a ton some other time. This always carries a ton. More locks on the doors, ways to get up on top to uh, check the solar panels, which are up on top, you can't see them. Uh, we have two DP85 solar panels, which also assist the battery when we're parked with sun. Steps to come out automatically wow, that was fast. to get up and down. Um, Recaro racing seats, pretty comfortable with heater and vent if you wanted to use it. And three point harnesses, learned about that in, in uh, days of racing with off road drivers in Baja 1000. Um, instead of having water bottles rolling all over the place, we have a platypus, which is back here behind this bag right here. Uh -huh. It has three liters of water in it. Suck on it. On the road, stick it back up again. No bottles rolling around. And you can put ice in it too if you want, or lemon. You probably put vodka in if you wanted to. So these seats are totally adjustable with, with this slide out, things like that, and up, back, down, everywhere you want. These are the gauges for the, for the airbags in the back. And this is for the, for the tank itself. This is a radar and laser detector in case you ever worry about getting caught. Uh, the radios are rugged radio. We've, we've learned that we that it's very important to communicate and you don't want to yell or say, what was that, that? what did you say? say again? You saw that? If there's a dog or a person running across the street or a hole you didn't see and then passengers looking down the road and saying, um, look at that hole up there, you're gonna go, what, what did you say? Oh, you wanna hear everything she says and she wants to hear everything you say without any and it also cuts out a lot of the road noise too so they're really they're really that's a new addition for us and we really like them driving down the road and just being able to speak in a normal voice all the time yeah yeah no without yelling and even in the car you know what'd you say monica what there's road noise you know yeah it takes that care of road that's noise fantastic. radio controls are here this is a small inverter if we just want to charge the phone or the or the computer in the camper. Inside outside temperature, uh, fuel switch from the main tank to the to the auxiliary tank, 
side lights, these guys up here. Manual transmission, mandatory. Half the people we met on the road with problems had automatics with the automatic. And you can't fix it anywhere. Right. Nobody knows how to fix an automatic. How about your gauges? That's all motor, Mo engine? Those are um, oil, water, volts, boost, and exhaust, mechanical from autometer. I don't want to know if I'm down on a really bad road that the oil pressure is in somewhere between the R and the M and normal. I want to know that it's 41 pounds and if it suddenly drops to 38 pounds, I want to know why right away. Now what's this? That is a professional idiot light. If the oil pressure drops below 12 pounds, that light comes on and you don't miss it. <laughs> it shines at you? <laughs> yeah, Professor, I, I think you would notice. Uh, this is the ARB switch for the front differential locking system, manual, and you can switch from the back to the front, oh, nice. to the inside. See what the girls are doing? <laughs> There's the girls. <laughs> yeah, but mostly it's most it's it's convenient for all things, but especially for the backing up, it's nice. To see what you where you're well, what you're backing into. Yeah. So the lights are up here, the the, uh, the main driving lights, the fog lights, the backup lights, and uh, so if I'm driving down the road and somebody flashes their lights at me, which they will, and they all the big trucks in Finland, for example, all have monster lights because they have to it's night it's dark you know half the year, completely. So you don't have your high beams on, and they will blind you. They they have they they can get pissed off very easy. So. Dimmer switch, you don't have to take your hands off the wheel, you just hit the dimmer switch. And all the lights go down to normal. Poof. The fog lights go off, the driving lights go off, everything goes off. And behind this seat's a little toolbox with all my stuff in it that I use all the time, like big screwdrivers and, and pliers and things like that. I've got more tools in the camber, but this is my, my general purpose uh, toolbox back there. This, 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 this window opens up from inside, which we open it up if we stop for the night. We lock the hubs for any place where we might want to get away. We lock the hubs, point the truck in the direction we want to leave, and crack this window so we can crawl through, get behind the steering wheel, and drive away. We hope it never happens, you know, but shit happens. <clears throat> if somebody really wants to get nasty, we have sky, sky, sky blazer signals. We can light one of those up and throw it at their feet and scare the shit out of them. This is, a, this is also a fire, fire, fire extinguisher I did a story on. It will put out practically any kind of fire. And all you have to do is open it up and use this striker and strike it and hold it on the fire. And it takes all the oxygen out of the air. So the fire just goes out. Wow, what an amazing build. It was so wonderful to meet Gary and Monica Westcott. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please join our team. Hit the subscribe button and the like bell so you can get notified next time we have a video. And we'll see you next time on the road. Ciao and see you on next video.